Hi YouTubers, today we're going to take a look at the 9JY record player attachment from RCA which was released in the middle of 1949 and continued throughout uh, the latter part of that year into 1950 uh, which then had it followed by uh, the RP190 which was the plastic tone arm plastic uh, turntable. Now the RP168 and lots has been written about it and many many videos are out there on YouTube about it. The RP168 changer and uh, 9JY Y record player attachment um, had come in a variety of reiterations and uh, many of those reiterations uh, were produced based on cost cutting and as well trying to get as many uh, literally uh, hundreds of thousands of these things produced to meet increased demand and so cost cutting was obviously introduced and of course uh, outside suppliers were invited to obviously get some of these uh, 9JYs manufactured quickly. Now the original one or at least from my understanding one of the first once, which I managed to pick up at a garage sale, doesn't work, was with the Bakelite um, offering uh, originally different things than the uh, latter reiterations did. The first thing you can notice is that the very original one had the RCA Victor logo right on the top of the Bakelite. You can see I've removed the RP168 changer for demonstration purposes. And the uh, one that followed many months later had the RCA logo as we see most of these uh, 9JYs with its positioning on the front of the actual Bakelite. Now another major difference is that the original ones had a nice uh, um, uh, Bakelite tone arm actually built into the actual case whereas down the road again from what I'm told by experts in the field it was dropped because of cost cutting measures and you can see here there is no um, uh, armrest in Bakelite on the side and the tone arm sits in a small little uh, lip underneath which of course keeps the tone arm from flying around. Um, I actually prefer it when you could see the um, uh, little armrest there that, that helps the tone arm in place much more securely. Now another couple of changes we notice is that when the RP168 changer was uh, outfitted into the case, the original ones uh, had a number of design features which were either changed or dropped as the RP168 was developed through into the latter part of 1949 and into the early 50s. Uh, one of the major changes was the way the turntables cam guide was designed. The original ones and many of them out there uh, had the cam guide machined and also um, a cam cover was um, installed with two screws in silver here to complete the actual cam travel guide. You can see that kind of crooked semicircle. Now that is the way most of the tables look and uh, many of them were continued to be manufactured in that way. Now uh, interestingly enough I discovered that when working on this model the actual underside of this table all of the cam guide travel is machined into the brass. So in other words, there is no separate uh, silver plate that had to be screwed on or off. All of the travel, including that kind of almost semicircle, was machined into the brass, just like these other components were machined into the brass. It was all one piece. And in the very early models and continuing throughout many variations, had more like a two-piece situation with the second piece being that silver plate, which again does not exist in this particular variation. Another interesting variation of the one I've rebuilt is that the motor uh, was mounted onto a separate plate which in turn was mounted onto the underside of the base. With the original ones and the ones we know of, this motor of course, we know it very well, was bolted directly into the base. So you can see one of the motor mounts I've left here for demonstration and another hole is here and another hole is here for those three bolts to be installed into. And the idler wheel and the idler wheel uh, swing arm was all directly bolted into the base which actually in my opinion made for a much easier installation. In the one I rebuilt the motor, the uh, swing shaft and the idler wheel were all first attached to a silver metal plate which in turn was then installed into the base. Made for a bit more convoluted design and a little more difficult to deal with when rebuilding but from what I'm told by uh, many of the YouTubers who produce some great videos out there on the RP-168 was a design that was incorporated by outside suppliers who obviously uh, were helping RCA manufacture these things by the hundreds of thousands. Uh, another interesting uh, design difference was that the idler wheel on the earlier models 
wheels had a screw that attached the idler wheel to a shaft that was of course uh, then built into the swing arm. Whereas with the one I rebuilt, this whole metal plate assembly had the actual idler wheel sit on a spindle loosely and was held in place by a little coil washer. So those are some of the differences. There were a couple of other minor things, like for example, uh, if you know the unit well enough, there's a felt donut that goes around a little post and that post keeps the spider cam from, a uh, spider lever rather, from slamming up against itself. In the actual version I picked up and rebuilt, there is no such thing. There is no donut or even need for a donut because uh, this little stopper uh, was differently designed and for whatever reason, I do not know the answer, um, it never needed this kind of like softening donut mechanism. So with that in mind, you could see a lot of interesting points in how the RP168 changer and how the 9JY uh, model and its case were changed over a period of, I would say, less than uh, six months to a year to allow for um, increased cost efficiency and uh, having second and third party manufacturers help RCA out to get this thing out to the public in, in what turned out to be hundreds of thousands of models. So why don't we give this one a little whirl? You don't have to be that much of an expert to get these things rebuilt as long as you make sure that the rubber parts are all replaced or resurfaced such as a very good drive wheel is necessary and you also need to make sure as I've discovered that these rubber motor mounts need to be soft and supple and not turned into sand because that's what usually happens with these things. If you've got a really nice soft and thick rubber motor mount, which I discovered I needed to uh, ensure was existing in mine, you'll have no slippage uh, and, and no stalling and, and some pretty good timing. The other thing you need to make sure of, of course, is that you've got your separator knives and your plastic shelf all lined up properly and not binding. And of course, to do that, you have to take the rubber, um, the, sorry, the, uh, the black spindle cap off and of course, realign the table with the famous star wheel, all of which are pointed out in many excellent videos on YouTube. So let's give this one a whirl. We've got a nice selection of 45s here that span from the late 50s all the way into the mid 60s. And we'll show you how easy it is to get these things to work and how you don't have to be a rocket scientist to get these uh, restored to a nice, nice um, operating condition. So let's give this one a whirl and we'll see how nicely they work. Here we've got Pretty Woman, of course, by none other than the late, great Roy Orbison. You'll see I've got a brand new P51 cartridge attached to the, uh, installed to the tone arm. And of course, we've got it playing through a Sony AM FM cassette with line input um, player. give it a whirl and kind of come up with another selection from the stack. See how quickly the changer operates when perfectly timed and adjusted. Another interesting change that was made to the 9JY and the RP168 over the months was the power switch, which is located here on the later 9JY, such as this one, it only shut on and off. There was just one click, one detent. Whereas on the very early RP168, you had not only a click, but you also had a rheostat or variable kind of turn to it, which allowed for variable output from the actual device to whatever radio it was attaching to. That was dropped as the RP168 9JY had uh, continued its production. 
And here we can see the P51 cartridge, which is a not as not a low profile like the original ones came, a little thicker, and that keeps the amount of records we could stack and play to a maximum of seven, whereas the original could have played up to eight or nine, sometimes even ten. We're gonna give it a whirl and see what else we have on the stack. And that one here, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, by the Browns, which is Scarlet Ribbons for her hair. Late 50s classic. And again, you can see how quickly the changer operates when properly adjusted, when idler wheel and mounts are nice fresh rubber and nice and supple, and when we have everything properly timed. Another example of what is on the stack by watching the changer work and playing the famous Dave Clark 5 in 1965 with, of course, flat all over. Let's see how itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini sounds like. She was afraid to come out of the locker. She was as nervous as she could be. And of course there's no shortage of 45s that you could find out there on eBay and everywhere else. You could even see that if you look carefully enough, you could find 45s on the original labels. Here's a Patty Page Mercury label with Mercury sleeve. You've got a nice RCA uh, inside an RCA sleeve. And here's a uh, Four Aces uh, DECA label in a DECA sleeve. So there's no shortage of these things around to make sure your 45 player has lots of material with which to work. And finally, we'll show the last 45 on this stack dropping second to last one actually which happens to be of course little Peggy March doing I will follow him Finally, we'll have the last record on the stack play with Brenda Lee's famous I'm Sorry. I dare say the unit plays probably nearly as well as it did back in the late 40s. YouTubers, I hope you found this to be of interest, particularly the way the RP-168 changer and 9JY attachment evolved, so to speak, from its first days in the market to its uh, latter days before its successor, the RP-190, came along. So again, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make some more to outline what we did to get this one running.